Yes, Mr. Oh. The Commission, please, as I call Mr. Melville Ruddy. Uh, Mr. Ruddy, do you mind standing a moment? And can I ask you uh, whether you'd prefer to make an oath or take an affirmation? I'll make an oath, please. Yes, swear the witness, please. I swear by Almighty God. I swear by Almighty God. That the evidence I shall give. That the evidence I shall give. Will be the truth. Will be the truth. The whole truth. The whole truth. And nothing but the truth. Nothing but the truth. Thank you, Mr. Ruddy. Do sit down. Oh. Mr. Ruddy, is your full name Melville William Ruddy? Yes, it is. And do you live at an address that it's known to the, that is known to the Royal Commission in Kuladi in Queensland? Yes, I do. And what's your occupation, Mr. Ruddy? A farmer. And Mr. Ruddy, did you receive a summons to attend to give evidence today? Yes, I have. Do you have that summons there with you? Yes, I do. I attend yeah. to that summons, Commissioner. Exhibit 4.89, summons to Mr Ruddy. Uh, and Mr Ruddy, did you make a statement to the Royal Commission dated the 21st of June 2018? Yes. You have that statement there? Yes, I have, yeah. And is there an amendment that you wish to make to that statement? Yeah, there is, yeah. Is that amendment to paragraph 27 of the statement? Yes, it is. 27, yes. And is the amendment to the sentence beginning in addition? Yes. Which we see on the fourth line down? Yes. Uh, and is the amendment to delete the words after the word because and add the words the profit margins on the trading model were diminishing? Yes. So does that full sentence now read... In addition, the farm was not performing as well as I had hoped for a number of reasons, including because the profit margins on the trading model were diminishing. Yes, that's correct. That amend amendment has been handwritten on the statement? Yes. Could you please initial that amendment? Do you have a pen there, Mr Ruddy? Yes. And having made that amendment, are the contents of your statement true and correct? Yes. I tender that statement, Commissioner. Exhibit 4.90, the statement of Mr Ruddy and its annexures. Mr Ruddy, could you please explain where Kuladi is in Queensland? Yes, it's 110k west of Charleville. And how long have you been a farmer, Mr Ruddy? Oh, yeah, well, I left school when I was 14 and started working on a family farm. Uh, yeah, I've been farming and working off farm ever since. And how old are you now, Mr Ruddy? 68. And what was the first farm that you worked on? On my dad's farm. And are you married, Mr yes. Ruddy? Yeah. Do you have any children? Yeah, yes. Three boys. And in the 1970s, did you and your wife purchase a farm? Yes, we did. Was that farm called Coolabar? Yes, it was. And later in the 1970s, did you and your wife also purchase your parents' farm? Yes, we did, yes. And that was a farm called Glen Eden? Yes, it was. And then in the 1980s, did you and your wife sell those two farms? Yes, we did. And you, you bought a further farming property mm -hmm. in Tara? Yes. And did you subsequently sell that property? Yes. Also in the 1980s, did you and your wife buy a farm called Sunrise? Yes, we did. And where was Sunrise located? 30k north west of Toowoomba. <clears throat> and did you need... Uh, to borrow money to buy Sunrise? Yeah, we did. Who did you borrow that money from? Uh, West Bank and the Agricultural Bank. 
And did you and your family move to Sunrise? Yeah, we moved there in 85. And what sort of farming operations did you run at Sunrise? Oh, just grazing cattle and, and a small feedlot. Now, by the early 1990s, how were things going with your operations and Sunrise? Oh, well, we were sort of we travelled along all right, never had much debt, anything like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. I was doing a lot of off-farm work, yeah. And what was the nature of the off-farm work that you were doing? Oh, yeah, I was doing a little, little bit of contracting and working for agents in cattle yards and, and generally off-farm farm work, yeah. And in 2000, did you buy a dozer? Yeah, I did, yes. And what did you use the dozer for? We used the dozer for contract uh, cutter barring or blade ploughing. Could you explain what cut cutter barring or blade ploughing is, Mr Ruddy? <laughs> it's, uh, I was developing woody weed, weed country up so fast you can grow and, and it stops erosion and improves your country and develops pasture. And in the period when you were doing that off-farm work, did you notice some changes in the values of land in your area? Yes, I did, yes. Now, what did you notice? Oh, well, after, well, around Mitchell where I was doing it, when yeah, uh, places were sort of developed up with cutter barring and buffle started growing, they increased, increased in value dramatically, quite substantially. So you saw increases in property yep. values. Yep. And what did you think about that? Oh, well, it was, uh, that was a good opportunity, I thought. So I started looking around for a place to buy myself. Yes. And Mark and I to develop up, yeah. And in 2004, did you buy a farm called Aaronfield? Yes, I did. And where's Aaronfield? Aaronfield's 110k west of Charleville on the Paru River. Uh, and how did you find out that Aaronfield was available? Oh, through agents. Just in Charlotte, I had an agent looking out for me. Mm -hmm. And at that time, you still owned Sunrise? Yes, we did. And can you describe what type of property Aaronfield is? Oh, it's about a quarter open downs country, and, uh, and yeah, probably, yeah, about a quarter sandalwood country, and, and the other half would be Mulga. And what did you plan to do on Aaronfield? Oh, like graze cattle, yeah. And did you buy Aaronfield with anyone else? Yes, I did. Who did you buy it with? One of my sons. And who was on the title for Aaronfield? One of my boys. And were you on the title as well, Mr Ruddy? Yes, I was. Yes. And how did you divide up your shares of the property? Uh, I own three quarter and my son owned a quarter. And do you recall what the purchase price was for Aaronfield? Yeah, it was 465000 And how did you divide that purchase? My sons uh, put in a hundred thousand, and, and I, I, yeah, I borrowed the rest of the money from NAB. Yeah. Uh, so at that time, did you still have a mortgage on Sunrise? Yes, we did. And did you have some other debts? Oh, we had a working cattle account with elders. And did you need to borrow money to fund your share of Aaronfield? Yes, I did. And you said you borrowed that from NAB. From NAB, yeah. And do you remember how much you borrowed from NAB? Yeah, well, all up, we, <clears throat> we moved the, the whole debt was 650000 with NAB. And when you say the whole debt, that took in the mortgage of Sunrise as well as of Aaronfield, is that right? That's right, that's correct. 
And at the time you bought Aaronfield with your son, do you recall what the value of Sunrise was? Approximately six fifty, six hundred thousand. And so what was your equity position across the two farms at that time? Oh, approximately 40%, I think. Mm -hmm. And did your son give a guarantee to NAB in respect of the loan? Yes, he did. And was the guarantee over the entirety of or just part of the loan? His, his guarantee was just part of the loan. His quarter share in Arenfield was the, the guarantee. Thank you. And, and after you and your son purchased Aaronfield, did you continue to farm at Sunrise? Yes, we did. How did you manage that? Oh, my wife sort of work, worked it and, and I worked Aaronfield. And yeah, we were bringing cattle down and like backgrounding them at, at Aaronfield and, uh, and putting through a, f a small feedlot at Sunrise. So your wife was running Sunrise? Yes. And you were running Aaronfield? Yes. And where were you both living? Well, she was living at Sunrise and I was living at Aaronfield, yeah. What's, what's the distance between them, Mr Ruddy? 730k. Now, did that set up start in about 2004? Yeah, 2004, five. Okay. And after the first few years of your arrangement with NAB, did you and your wife decide to refinance your facilities in 2007? Yes, we did. And why did you decide to do that? Oh, we were making a yearly reduction to NAB and, and uh, we thought an interest only loan with, with the Rural Bank and put our stock mortgage and put it all together and, and just work on interest only and, and, and put more money into developing and the place needed a lot of money spending on it. Are you referring to Aaronfield? Aaronfield, yes. yes. Uh, so you decided to move to Rural Bank? Yes, we did, yeah. And at the time that you refinanced with Rural Bank, did you increase your debt? Yes, we did. And what did you use the additional money for? Oh, I bought some cattle and, and I did more uh, cattle barring. Yes. Uh, and in your time at Rural Bank, did you have um, some different bank managers? I did. I had a couple, that's all, yeah. And was one of them a bank manager by the name of Ian Baisley? Yes, he was, yeah. And how was your relationship with Mr Baisley? Very good. And did he subsequently leave Rural Bank? He did. And where did he go after he left Rural Bank? He went to Bank West. And do you remember when that was? 2009 or 10. Mm -hmm. Now, by 2010, had you and your wife started to discuss selling Sunrise? Yes, we had, yeah. Uh, now, having had those discussions about potentially selling Sunrise, did you get a call in August 2010 from Mr Baisley? Yes, I did. Had you had any contact with Mr Baisley in the interim? Uh, not a lot. Maybe one phone call occasionally, but not that I can recall, no. And what do you recall of that conversation with Mr Baisley in August 2010? I oh, just, uh, yeah, suggested that Bankwest could give me a better deal. And did he talk to you about um, whether someone from Bankwest could come to meet with you? Yeah, he did. He said, could he bring a, a, a manager out to meet with me, yeah. Uh, now, uh, the... He gave you the name of that uh, person from Bank West, is that right? Yes, he did. And that person's name is also the subject of a non-publication direction. So I'm, I'm just going to refer to yep. him, the, the Bank West bank manager, as the bank manager. Yep. Okay. okay. Uh, now, had you heard of the bank manager before that time? Yes, I had. What had you heard about him? That he was a good, a good manager and a good man. And after you had that phone call with Mr Baisley in August 2010, did you then have a meeting with Mr Baisley and the bank manager? Yes, I did. Where was that? At Sunrise. And what do you recall about that meeting? Oh, just not a lot. We discussed things and we discussed selling Sunrise and, and yeah, and... Yeah, and then we... we we sort of thought places were improving in value, which they were, and 
and and we were sort of making our options whether to sell. We were, we were thinking, yeah, we sort of talked along those lines. That's all, and and uh, yeah, that's about it. Yeah. Do you remember Mr. Baisley and the bank manager talking to you about how the cattle market was going at that time? Oh yeah, they yeah, it was starting to pick up the market. It was picking up in America. Yeah, at that stage. And do you remember any discussion about uh, what you should do with your assets at that time? Oh yes, so we we all decided, I suppose, that it's a good time to consolidate assets and not sell them. I yeah. see. And do you remember any discussion about interest rates in that meeting? Oh, they did discuss that uh, they knew what rate I'd be paying at Rural Bank and they could give me a better deal. And was there discussion about um, the need to pay for a valuation if you moved across to Bank West? Yeah, there was. What did they say about that? Well, I'd have to pay for a valuation. And were you interested in that? No, I said, no, I've never paid for a valuation, never will. I said, I'll stay. What's the point of that? You're going to save me 5000 interest and charge me 7500 to to uh, value the joint. Mm -hmm. So you didn't proceed to refinance no, with Bank West at not, that time? No. I didn't proceed, no. So that was August 2010, and how did 2011 go for you on the farms? Oh, well, it sort of, <clears throat> yeah, we bought, bought, a, bought a few cattle, but not many, and, uh, you know, we had a real wet year in 2011. We had about 40 inches and 6 inches flood in, in January in 2012, and, uh, and all that rain in that sort of western country, we had no protein in our grass, and the cattle never did real good, eh? And what sort of model were you using for your cattle at that time? Oh, at that stage we were mainly using a trading model, buying in smaller cattle and and, uh, and backgrounding them for, for feedlots or putting through our own small feedlot. And what were you doing on each farm, using the trading model? Yes, we were. Yeah. Yes. Now, in the middle of that year, <coughs> in the middle of 2011, did you have your annual review with Rural Bank? Yes, I did, yeah. And did the person who handled your affairs at Rural Bank come to visit you at the farm? Yes, he came out to Aaronfield. And was there any discussion in that meeting about you selling one of your properties? Yeah, it was. Yes, it so was. What, what did the bank manager say to you about that? Oh, he thought it would be a good idea, you know, with a, because around, like where Sunrise situated, land values were, get, were sort of going up, and, uh, and he, he said it would be a good time to consolidate and, and sell, not, you know, sell, sell Sunrise and, and reduce our debt substantially, yeah. And did you discuss that suggestion from the Rural Bank Manager uh, with your wife after that meeting? Oh, I, I, I vaguely can't recall, but I would have done, yeah. I can't actually, yeah. And, and did you have any views about what you were going to do after that meeting? Yeah, well, we talked talked about what we need to sell it and and, and, and put more money into Aaronfield and, and what, how we'd go about selling the place, developing it, uh, not developing it, develop it, like tidying it up and making it saleable, yeah, mm. we talked. And around that time, did you get another telephone call from the Bank West bank manager? Yes, I did, yeah. And what do you recall of that conversation? Oh, the, the bank manager's said that he now had a valuer's ticket and he'd be able to value value both properties. And did that make the idea of refinancing from Rural Bank to Bank West more attractive to you? Yes, it did, yeah. Well, we, we, we sort of, you know, we thought we'd look at that and, and keep our options open, yeah. And did the bank manager ask to come and meet you? Yes, he did. And did you agree to that? Yes, I did, yeah. And in August 2011, did the bank manager come to Sunrise to meet you? Yes, he did. And what do you remember of that meeting with the bank manager? Oh, not a lot really. I can just remember we sort of, yeah, as, as I say, you know, we talked about it and, and the cattle market getting strong and, 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 and like that buying cattle in were getting dear, they were getting sort of dear and and the profit margin was sort of shrinking in that and we discussed about going into breeding cattle, yeah. Mm -hmm. And did the bank manager talk to you about um, the value of other properties in the area? Yes, he did, yeah. What did he say to you about that? Oh, he said that there was a 
a property down the road sold for 1.2 million. Yes. Yeah. And did you and the bank manager have a discussion about the value of your two properties, Sunrise and Aaronfield? Yes, we did, yeah. And did he tell you what he thought roughly the value of your two properties was? Yes, he did. What did he tell you? He thought about well over two, two million. At that stage, he said he hadn't really... I don't know whether he looked at Aaronfield at that stage, but just there he said the value of both properties would be well over two million, yeah. The, the combined value of combined the properties? Combined value, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, and did he tell you what he thought Bank West could lend you um, based on your properties being worth over $2 million? Yeah, he said 60% of the valuation. They lent and 60% of the valuation on the two places. And then they came back at $2.3 I see. And you said that you had some discussions with the bank manager in that... Um, visit about your cattle operations and about potentially moving across to a breeding model. Is yes, that right? that's correct. Yeah. Uh, and did you talk about your plans for Aaronfield? Yes, I did. We, 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 because we needed more cattle to make ourselves more viable and run more breeders. We needed to develop more country, so we, which we did, we, and, and we, Bank West gave us some more money and we did some more blade ploughing, yeah, cattle barring. And how, how long did you think that it would take for you to get a, a, a breeding model up and running properly? Well, as I discussed with the bank manager then, that it would take three years. Yes. It, it's not something that just happens overnight. It, you know, a trading model, you're buying them and selling them in 12 months was a breeding. You, you've got to wait for a cow to have a calf and it's a bit of a long-term thing, but it's not as risky. You know, and your freight freight was getting dear all the time out there. You know, to buy cattle in, and, and uh, yeah, it was that trading model of profits were just shrinking each year. I could see, you know. Mm -hmm. And did you talk to the bank manager about a loan that you had from the Bank of Queensland? <coughs> yes, I did. Um, what was that loan? Uh, I think, as I recall, it was fifty thousand dollars for about about eighty head of cattle. Yeah, I had a lease, a BOQ lease. Yes. And did you talk to the bank manager about whether or not you might take out more stock leases? Yeah, 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 we did, yeah, I did. Yes, I did. Yes, uh, to get the breeding model yes, up and get, running? Yes, to get more cattle up, get the numbers up, yeah. And did you also discuss with the bank manager what would happen if things went wrong? Yes, yes, we did, I did. Um, he, he, uh, you know, on, on looking at the, the value of the places, um, he said you had plenty of equity to draw on if, if, if you know if you get a few bad couple of bad years, you you're, you've got a couple hundred, few hundred thousand up your belt to ride it out. Uh, now, the plan that was discussed in that meeting would have involved you shifting from the idea of selling Sunrise mm -hmm. to holding on to it and putting more money into developing Aaronfield. Is that right? That's right, yes. And what did you think about whether that was a good business idea? Well, when we went away and did our sums and, and, uh, and yeah, we are sort of working on, on, on like getting up to 450 breeders you know, the, the figures sort of stacked up and thought it was a good business decision to hang on to Sunrise and keep feedlot in there and change, up and, and change to Bank West, yeah. Mm -hmm. And did you discuss interest rates and fees with the bank manager? Oh, not a lot. He told me that the interest rates be be cheaper and less fees, he told me, yeah. Yep. And, and what about the guarantee that your son currently had over a quarter of Aaronfield? Did you discuss that? We certainly did. And what was your understanding about what would happen with that if you moved across to Bank West? Well, our bank manager said there's not a problem. Him being a young fellow, he said we don't expect him to guarantee the whole loan. We'll just guarantee his quarter share of Aaronfield, mm -hmm. which was a $325,000 loan, I think, as I recall. Mm -hmm. So before that meeting with the Bank West bank manager, you'd been thinking of selling Sunrise? Yeah. Uh, and you hadn't really thought about moving to Bank West, is that right? That's right. But after the meeting, you decided that you would move to Bank West? Yes, that's right. And that you would not sell Sunrise? That's right. Okay. And that you would borrow more money uh, to develop up Aaronfield? That's right. 
Now, if you hadn't had that meeting with the bank manager, what do you think you would have done? Well, we, would have, we would have sold Sunrise. We're moving towards selling Sunrise and, uh, and, and reducing our debt. But, you know, yeah, well, when Bank West sort of offered us that, that such a good deal, to me being an extreme optimist, I thought, yeah, I thought that'd be the way to go. So you later told the bank manager that you would move across from Rural Bank to Bank West? Yes, I did, yeah. And in October 2011, uh, did the bank manager come out to Sunrise with the documents for you to sign for the new facilities? Yes. And you've exhibited those um, documents. They're part of your statement, the letters of offer. Yep. Yes. And they're dated um, the 21st of September 2011? Yes, they are. Yep. But the meeting in which the letters were handed to you took place in October 2011. Is that right? That is right, yes. And do you recall receiving the letters of offer prior to the meeting in October? No, well, I wouldn't have done it. I would have been out at at Aaronfield, but they probably were posted to Sunrise and, and you know, yeah, I, I didn't read them until, we, until the day I met him, yeah. Okay. Now, uh, could we just look at the first of those, which is um, behind the first tab in your statement, uh, FOS 0030 Yep. Now, if you turn to the second page of that, 0201, we see that Bankwest offered you, down the bottom of the page, a commercial advance facility with a limit of $695,000. Yes, yes. And that was in both yours and your wife's names? Yeah, that's correct. And we see above that that Bankwest also offered you a $100,000 overdraft again, both in yours and your wife's names. Yeah, that is correct. Okay. And then if we look at the second letter of offer, which is FOS 0030 0001 behind your um, second tab, Mr Ruddy, we see from the second page of that document, 0210, that Bankwest also offered you uh, a commercial advance facility in your name. Yep. Yes, that's correct. That was for three hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars. Yes. And the letters of offer also contain guarantees. Yes. And in relation to this facility, the facility that was just in your name, the guarantee was provided by your wife. Yes, it was. And when the bank manager brought the documents to you. Had he marked them up to show you where you and your wife needed to sign them? Yes, he had, yeah. And did he explain the terms of the documents to you? Uh, not, not, not really at the time. I, sh I should have read them more carefully myself, but I just thought they were a farm, a rollover farm facility, you know? Yeah. And how long did you think the facilities were going to run for? Oh, well, I was informed. <clears throat> that I wouldn't need another valuation till August 2014, and I just naturally thought the facility went to le to then. And that that time, the manager said, "By then, he said, you, with the development you're doing, your places will improved in value." And yeah. Uh, so this was um, uh, September, October 2011. So you thought the facilities would run for approximately three years, three years. until. August 2014. Yes. And yes, was that I mean. consistent with your plans for how long yes. it would take you to get the breeding model up and running? Yes, it was, yeah. Uh, and who did you think would do the, the further valuation that would be needed in August 2014? Well, I naturally thought that, that the bank manager would do it. I was looking forward to a long relationship with him. Yep. He seemed a good guy and, uh, and, and he knew his cattle. So you and your wife signed these letters of offer, Mr yes. Ruddy? Yes, we did. And uh, did you have a careful read of them before you signed them? Mm, well, I know I should have done, but I probably didn't, no. 
And did your son sign another guarantee in relation to the facilities? Yes, he did. And was that guarantee only in relation to Aaron Field? Well, that's what we believe it was, but then later on we found out it wasn't. Hmm. Yeah, that's what it was supposed to be in the agreement that that we discussed, that his, share, his guarantee was only, only his quarter share in Aaron Field, mm -hmm. yeah. And did Bank West go ahead and prepare valuations of your properties in this same month, in yes. October 2011? Yes, they did. Yeah. And did you ever get a copy of those valuations? No, I was told what they were, though. Yes. And what were you told the values of the properties were? As I recall, Sunrise was 1.2 and Aaronfield was 1.1. Now... Uh, having moved across to Bankwest by signing these letters of offer, did you also take out some more stock facilities with the Bank of Queensland? Yes, I did. Uh, and did you also continue <coughs> with your off-site work? Yes, I did. And in the first year after you moved across to Bankwest, how, how did you find your dealings with them? Oh, well, I wasn't having any problem with the, the manager, but the facilities seem to roll over and, you know, instead of paying interest one every six months, we were paying interest every two months. For a start it was a month and then it was, and then they changed it to two months and, and, and the facility, or the bank bill facilities, you know, and I never had anything to do with them prior to this, you know, it was just a different, and, and it was a bit confusing and, uh, and, and you know, you have to draw on your, yeah, you have to make interest payments all the time, yeah, it was a bit, a bit difficult, yeah. And did you raise that with Bankwest? Yeah, I did at the time, yeah. And what did they say? Oh, I can't really recall. They said they'd try and fix it. They might be able to roll it over. I think they rolled it over to three monthly or six monthly ones in and did, did yeah, they did help that way, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And did you struggle to make the interest-free payments? Yeah, we did, yeah. And in 2012, uh, being the year after you got your facilities from Bankwest, uh, how was your health? Oh, oh yeah, I just got a bit crook there for a while and I was, I was uh, yeah, I was uh, in hospital ICU for, for only a little while, but uh, yeah, and I was off work for a month, yeah. I had diverticulitis bad, I, nearly, I lost a lot of blood, yeah. yeah. So you were hospitalised and I was you hospitalised for over a week, yeah. And you were off work for... About a month. About a month, yeah. okay. And... How were you going with building up the breeders in that year? Yeah, we were starting to get a few cattle together, yeah. Yeah, that was, <laughs> it was working. You were starting to... The numbers were coming up. Like, in uh, 2012, we weaned 360 calves, eh? 367, actually. And in that year, did you increase your overdraft on a number of occasions? Yes, we did. Yes. And why did you do that? Oh, well, to help cover our interest and, and, and while we were waiting for the, uh, you know, well, yeah, you know, we'd, we'd put a few hef a lot of heifers to bulls and, and, and they were just carving and, and that was our plan to, like, run up a debt and, uh, and then, you know, have, uh, you know, have over a thousand head of cattle so we have something to sell and then start reducing our debt. That was the plan. Now... Sometime in 2012, did you get a letter from Bank West telling you that the bank manager wasn't going to be your bank manager anymore? Yes, I did. Yeah. And was anything else said in that letter? Oh, yes, they just said I had another bank manager. Uh, now, uh, what did you think when you got that letter? I was a bit amazed. You know, I was looking for a long-term relationship with... That's what I'm sort of used to. Yeah, I was a bit. Of, I was quite surprised that that he that that he'd moved on. Yeah, I, I did go and question where he was, and and I was just informed that he'd moved on, and and I had another manager. Yeah. And did you have any contact from the bank manager himself? No, no, no. Uh, and after that, you got a new bank manager. Yes. And that bank manager was Belinda King. That's right. That's okay. correct. And then moving into the next year, in 2013, how was that year for you? Oh, well, it, things got progressively worse then because uh, 
the live export ban in, in August 2012, as I recall, and, and cattle prices had just completely slumped. In 2013, we, yeah, we, well, well, it was later on in 2013, but we, you know, we, we sold some efforts for only 80 cents a kilo then, and, and it had gone from six inches of rain in January, and we never registered nine inches for the rest of the year. We just sort of went from from virtually floods and we had no rain in January and, and no rain much in, in no rain in 2012 and hardly any rain in 2013 either. They were pretty tough years. And in early 2013, did Bank West close one of its branches near you? Yes, they did. Which branch was that? The Toowoomba branch. And where did your account move to? I moved to a place called Jibung. Okay. And did it stay in Jibung? No. No, no. How long was it at Jibung for? Oh, I can't really recall, but only three or four months. Might be six months. It wasn't very long, three months. And where did it move to after that? Somewhere in Brisbane. I can't remember where the office is there now, but they moved to another office in Brisbane, yeah. And did you have one bank manager during that period? No, I had quite a few. How many do you think you had, Mr Ruddy? Three. And how did you find the changes in the bank manager in that period? Oh well, it was confusing. Like you, you know, you know when when you're sort of in in the drought and 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 and, and cattle prices are totally depressed. You and and you can't sort of go and talk to anyone. Are you? They're in Brisbane and uh, and they're just it, it's yeah. I'm used to having a bank manager ring up. He comes out and sees me. We have a cup of tea and have a drive around and we come to a decision about things, you know. That's how it's always been all my life, since I was 23. And did any of the bank managers come and visit you at the farm? No, no, never. And ha so how did you talk to them? On the phone. Okay. Now, at the same time, were you continuing to increase your overdraft? Yes, we were, yeah. And in May 2013, uh, did Bankwest talk to you about doing another valuation of your properties? Yes, they did. And what did you say to Bankwest when that was raised? Oh, I told them I, <coughs> that I didn't need a valuation for 2014. That, that was what I was told. And what was Bankwest's response to that? Uh, they said if, if they thought the property had gone down in value, that uh, they're in, in, entitled to call for another valuation and I'd have to pay for it, yeah. Mm -hmm. And did Bankwest speak to you about who would do the valuation? Yes, they did. They, they, did, ring, they did speak to me about it, yeah, and told me who was doing it, yeah. Okay. Uh, and you said they told you you'd need to pay for the valuation? Yes. yes. Do you remember how much Bankwest told you you would need to pay? $6,600. And what did you think about that? I wasn't too happy. I needed that money to buy lick and fodder, from, not so much fodder, but with mulgi, you, 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 we feed them a loose lick, you know, high protein loose lick to help 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 uh, digest the mulgi. Can you explain to those of us who don't know what lick is, Mr. Ruddy? It's a uh, it's a uh, it's a it's a mixture of of, of minerals. Uh, like a sugar form, I suppose, and 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 it's and it's a high protein, and helps digest the gut and the microbes in the gut. Mm -hmm. you, you, yeah, yeah, there's, and, and there's quite a different. It's a pretty big thing, you know, with mulga to, to give them that because it's a hard chewing leaf they eat, and they need need the they they need that that lick, as I call it, to uh, to digest the mulga. Yeah, and they do quite well on it, actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so what was the condition of your cattle at this stage? Oh, they weren't too bad. They were poking along all right, yeah. Now, before you received the valuations in late May 2013, did you get a letter from Bank West telling you that they were going to increase your facilities? Yes, I did, yeah. Okay. And did Bank West then go ahead and get the valuations? Yes, they did. And did they charge you for the valuations? Yes, they did. Um, and as a result of being charged for the valuations, were you able to um, buy the lick for your cattle and do the other things that you described before? No. Well, it was taken straight out of our bank account without a... We weren't even informed, like, 
we knew we were going to pay for it, but we thought we'd, you know, might be, you know, give us a month, 30, 30 days or 60 days to get organised. But, yeah, bang, she comes straight out of her bank account and I had no money to buy, well, I couldn't pay my bill, so I couldn't, couldn't buy leak. That's when I started home brewing. And I'm quite good at it now. <laughs> did Bankwest ever give you a copy of the valuation reports? Yes, they did. Mm -hmm. And when, we, when you were given the valuations, did you see how much your properties had been valued at? Yes, I did. Do you remember what the valuations were? Yeah, Sunrise was valued at um, 750000 and and Aaronfield was valued at 900000 Now, um, I think that's as I recall. You said at this time, as a result of the money being taken straight out of your bank account, you didn't have money to buy a lick for the cattle. Mm. What was the consequence of that? No, well, we, they, you know, some of them got lost condition pretty bad, and we lost about 80 head then over the next three months as a consequence of that until we sort of I went, I got a job contracting, got a bit of money coming in, yeah. And what was your financial position generally at that time? How were you going with meeting your bills? Oh, well, we were struggling, yeah. It's a, you know, it was a struggle, yeah. yeah. And after Bankwest got the valuations for 750 and 900, uh, what happened next? Oh, as I recall, uh, they informed me that I'd have to sell one place, yeah, and, re and, and try and get, get, get my whatever it is, loan valuation to radio into loan, whatever it is there, LVR, correct, because I was, you know, way over the bank's limits. Mm -hmm. And how did you react when you got that news? Well, I wasn't very happy about it, no. I, you know, uh, yeah, at that stage then places that start coming down in value to what they were. So, and, and you know, when you, when you only got in, in the middle of a cattle slump, in the middle of a drought, having to sell a place, you're not going to get your full potential for what it's worth. Did they tell you which property they wanted you to sell? Well, they suggested Sunrise, yeah, because it was easier to sell. Like, at that stage, we wouldn't have been able to sell that place at Charleville. It was, you know, it would have been more difficult to sell it. <coughs> but Sunrise being closer into town, uh, you know, more, where it's more populated, would have been an easier place to sell. And did you have any thoughts about whether you'd be able to sell Sunrise? Well, we thought we would. Yeah, we, you know, we 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 were we were put it on the market for nine hundred thousand. Yeah, we thought it'd sell for that actually. So uh, after the bank told you that um, what you've just described that you weren't within their limits anymore and you needed to sell a property, mm -hmm. Sunrise, did you then get letters of variation to your facilities from the bank? Yes, we did, yeah. And in those letters, were you asked to make a $50,000 debt reduction by the end of 2013? Yeah, yes, I did, yes. And and you were asked to sell Sunrise? Yes, I was, yeah. And did you agree to those terms? Yes, I did, yeah. Why, why did you do that? Well, I thought we had no option, you know. We were in a bit of a corner. And you proceeded to try and sell Sunrise? Yes, we did, yes. And you said you put it on the market for nine hundred. Is that what you said? Nine hundred thousand. Yeah. Now, um, later that year, did you have an issue with your dozer? Yeah. Well, I, I, contracting. Yeah, I burnt burnt my contracting machine. Yeah, I, I never had it in. Oh, with the money being a bit short and everything, I know it was pretty foolish. But yeah, we didn't didn't worry about insuring it. We cut costs and and I lost a hundred green with the machine. Yeah. So you were using the, the, the dozer to make income off, off farm. Off yeah, farm. Yeah, off farm. But yeah. the dozer was destroyed? Destroyed, yeah. Uh, and what were the consequences of that for you? Well, we lost off farm income and and then I had to to finish the job. I had, had an older tractor at home, which I, 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 because I had two, and then I had to, yeah, I was feeding 300 head with a chainsaw. I was cutting, cutting scrub with a chainsaw and I put my other those that work, he only did 500 hours and blew the motor up. So, yeah, and then it sat for a while too, yeah. 
And at the end of that year, in December 2013, did you get a call from a person called Nikki Adamson at Bankwest? Yes, I did. Yes. And did she tell you that she was now in charge of your file? Yes. And that your file had been moved to group credit structuring within Bankwest? Yes. Uh, and early the following year, did you tell Bankwest that there was an interested party for Sunrise? Yes, there was. And did Nikki Adamson get back in touch with you after that? Yes, she asked how it went. And I said they, they bought another place about 30 kilometres away, yeah. And did she um, make any observations about the price that you put on Sunrise? Yes, she thought it was a bit unrealistic and I should we should bring our price down. And what did you think about that? Oh, well, yeah, I, well, I sort of, I suppose I thought it was worth more than what it was, but I, you know, at that stage I didn't, I need to sell for that because if I'd have sold it for, you know, like, bought the price down to 650, well then my LVR would still be the same, I'd still be, like, you know, then I'd have to, I'd, I'd have to, I'd just have to keep selling, I only had two places, and they'd have both gone, I reckon. Did you end up receiving some interest in Sunrise? Yeah, we did. We had interest, but, you know, as I say, we just, just couldn't get it over the line. Yeah, no. so no firm offers at that stage? No, no firm offers, no. Uh, you weren't able to sell at that point? Weren't able to sell, no. So during 2014, did you keep speaking to Bankwest about your facilities? Yes, I did, yes. I did. And in October of that year, did Bankwest tell you that if you didn't reduce your debt, it would offer farm debt mediation before taking action to enforce its securities? Yes, they did. And around that time, did you start getting assistance from someone else in dealing with the bank? Yes, I did, yeah. And how did you find that person? Oh, really, really helpful, yeah. And how did you come across that person? Uh, I was just recommended to her from, from the neighbours up the road, mm -hmm. yeah, who used, used a company that she was working with, but when we went, with Tasha, we're just working on our with her, yeah. And did she help you lodge a dispute with the Financial Ombudsman Service? Yes, she did. Yes. And did you receive a recommendation from the Ombudsman in about August of 2015? Yes, we did, yes. And that recommendation was partly in your favour and partly in the bank's favour, is yes, that right? Yes, that is right, yes. And you've annexed that recommendation to your statement uh, behind tab three. FOS 0030 0001 4238. Yes. We see at 4329 when it's brought up on the screen. Four two three nine, I'm sorry. So FOS 0030 001 I'm going to say the number again in case I've um, not said it correctly. FOS 0030 0001 4239. There we are, uh, the recommendation. And could we have 4239 and 4240 on the screen together? So uh, in the recommendation, the FOS case manager found that Bank West had overvalued Sunrise in October 2011. Do you see that under the heading, was the FSP's September 2011 finance offer inappropriate? The FSP overvalued S in October 2011 but this did not render the lending inappropriate. Do you see that? Yes, I can, yes, yes, yeah. Uh, and down the bottom of the page, we see that 
the case manager found that given the flawed September 2011 valuation for the Sunrise property, Bankwest should not have relied on the 2013 valuation to require you to make a principal reduction to debt and to sell the properties. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, and the Ombudsman recommended uh, that you be paid $2,000 to compensate for your non-financial loss. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yep. Uh, and the Ombudsman also found, or the case manager for the Ombudsman, because this was a recommendation, found that Bankwest was entitled to take recovery action. Yes, that's right. Did you accept that recommendation? No, we didn't. We rejected it. Yeah. And why was that, Mr Ruddy? <coughs> oh, we, we just weren't happy with, with the decision and, yeah, we yeah, weren't happy at all, really. Yeah. And did your dispute then move to a formal determination by an ombudsman? Yes, it did. It moved on. And if, one, yeah. if, if we turn to your fourth exhibit, um, FOS 0030001521212, we see that um, you have an extra copy of the determination that was made by the ombudsman. Yes. Now, if we turn to 5213, the first page inside the determination, you might need to go one more page over, Mr Ruddy. Yes. We see that the Ombudsman essentially adopted the same findings that had been made in the recommendation. Mm, yes. But there were some changes that related to the charging of interest. Yes, that's correct. Uh, so the, the Ombudsman found that um, the case manager had erred in concluding that Bank West ought to be allowed to charge interest at a particular rate. Yes. Now, did you accept the determination? No, we rejected that one too, yeah. And why was that, Mr Ruddy? Well, again, we, we just weren't happy with the outcome. We thought, um, yeah, we thought we would have done a, a little bit better, you know, like... Uh, yeah, just just wasn't happy with the outcome. Now, this, if we just have a look at 5214, we see that had you accepted the determination, yeah. Bank West would have been required to reduce your overdraft account balance mm. and credit $2,000 to your overdraft account. Yeah, that's correct. Now, you didn't accept the determination, but no. did Bank West go on to do either of those things? No, no, they didn't, no. Okay. Now, did you then go to farm debt mediation in August 2016? Yes, we did, yes. How did you find the farm debt mediation day, Mr Ruddy? Oh, it's a pretty stressful day, yeah. It, it you know, it, it's something you'd rather not do. But, uh, but yeah, anyway, we... At that stage was our only choice. And did you have anyone assisting you at the farm debt mediation? No, just Tasha Keys and myself and my wife. And did the bank have lawyers at the mediation? Yes, they did, yeah. And how long did it go for? Uh, most of the day, actually, yeah. And at the end of the day, did you reach a general agreement? Yes, we did. Uh, and how long did it take for that agreement to be turned into a formal agreement after the mediation? Uh, probably about a month, I guess, was I recall. I think it was, the mediation was in August and I think we signed the deed in October, if I remember correctly. <coughs> now, um, by the agreement that you signed, you agreed to sell Sunrise within six months? Yes, we did, yes. And to pay Bankwest 75% of the proceeds of sale from Sunrise? That is correct. And pay Bankwest an additional $410,000 to discharge the mortgage over Aaronfield? That is correct. And if you did those things, Bankwest would discharge its mortgages over the two properties? That is right. And release you and your son from any further liability? That is right. Did That's you feel good. that you had a choice as to whether to agree to that um, proposal? No, we never had a choice. Oh, well, we would have had a choice, but, you know, that, that was 
Yeah, we we did. Yeah, that well, that, that was a mediation, and and that, that was, we had no choice. That was it. Yeah. What did you think would happen if you didn't reach an agreement following the mediation? Well, I had planned I was going to try and sell cattle and sell, and, and yeah, I was going to try and raise enough money and go straight to the Supreme Court, actually. And did you sign the deed of agreement, Mr Ruddy? Yes, I did. And having signed it, did you then proceed to sell Sunrise? Yes, we did. When did you do that? We sold that in, as I recall, in April 2017. And how much did you sell it for? 750000 and did Bank West receive some of the proceeds of sale? Yes, they did. They got, of the, of the net amount, 75%. Yep. And did you have to borrow more money to reach your other obligations under the agreement? Yes, we did, yeah. yeah, yeah. And who did you borrow that money from? <coughs> I, I couldn't, couldn't get money from the bank, so I, I had to borrow 160 grand off my mum and I sold a dozer to make up the other money. And were you then, having paid that money, released under the terms of the deed of agreement? Yes, I was. Do you have any facilities with Bankwest now? No, we don't. Do you have any finance with any other bank? I, I still do cattle leases with BAQ. That's all. And how has it been for you and your farm operations to not have finance? Oh, extremely difficult. You know, like... You need a bank, you know, for carry on and help you out. It's pretty hard when you, when you got no bank. So how are you managing to fund your farming operations now? No, well, we, we're probably selling cattle when they're not ready, and we're and I'm contracting. I've gone back contracting. And how many cattle are you running now? About three hundred. And what's the largest number of cattle you've been running in the past? Oh well. At the time of the dispute, we were about 950, well, not about, we had 950 branded cattle. And uh, would you say that you're getting back on your feet now, Mr Ruddy? No, we're well, pretty steadily. We, we're still here. That's the main thing, you know, and uh, and it's just been, been a pretty... Oh, well, well, it's not only me. A lot of farmers have had a difficult time. It's, you know, uh, yeah... It's, it's just a compounding things like, you know, the live export ban on cattle was was a big thing in the in the cattle market crash and like, you know, the equity is rode straight away and farms are hard to sell and there's no confidence in the market and, and it just makes things very difficult. But you've got to have, you need you, you, you need you know you need a bank to, in my opinion anyway, to be a little bit more forgiving and and, and a foul for your facility, help you ride it out. And in 2014, I've started valued everything up and so on, and I walked out with just my swag and my stock with my shadow over my shoulder. That wouldn't have worried me because I stuck. They stuck to what they said, but they didn't. Thank you, Mr. Ruddy. I have no further questions. Yes, Mr. Sharon. We don't have any cross examination, Your Honour. Yes, Commissioner. Thank you very much, Mr. Ruddy, for coming. You may step down. Uh, I assume it'd be. Most efficient thing to stop and come back at two o'clock, would it, Ms. Orr? Yes, thank you, Commissioner. Two o'clock then.